Hello, this is Michael Hancock, and we're going to do a quick tutorial on batch importing in Avid. I have a template project set up with the sequence. Uh, we'll pretend like this is a commercial. We've got all of our cuts using some stock footage and space for a logo. So we are going to start by importing some footage. Um, this could be music, it could be graphics, it could be still pictures, it could be QuickTime movies, anything that you import the normal import way. That is file import, right click choose import, or like I did, map it to my keyboard. Um, and we're going to go on ahead and we're going to grab the original logo at 6 seconds uh, with no alpha, no audio, we're going to do an import. That brings the media in, it creates a master clip in the bin, and then it generates new media, Avid MXF media, and puts it in the Avid Media Files folder. Um, this is great because if I was to, let's see here, go in to where I have this, and if I was to delete this actual file here, or move it, um, in any program like, say, Final Cut or Premiere, anything that references the file location, um, if I was to move that and come back into here, it would be offline because it's just looking through the different folders at where it lives on your uh, actual hard drive. Avid, because it does its own media management, creates new media and stores it where it wants. Uh, you can move the original file and not lose the actual media once it's imported. Let's move that back. Okay, so we've imported it and we're going to cut it into place. So we have our commercial and it goes out to the logo. Excellent. Um, now, batch importing is different from importing. Batch importing is where you can select one or a batch of clips and re-import them, either changing the import settings. Um, if you imported this wrong and it was actually supposed to be smaller than the screen size and you had it set to scale it up, you could re-import it. If you have the color import settings wrong, if you have it at 601 and it needs to be RGB, you can change that. And the beauty of it is, is that everywhere that this piece of uh, media that you imported is used, say this is the logo at the end of 15 different spots in this project, if you batch import it, it will update in all 15 spots. Or you can use it where if you have a revision to a logo or you have watermarked music and then you get clean music without a watermark, you can batch import it and it will update it everywhere that it's been used in the entire project. It could be in one sequence, it could be in 300 sequences. Everywhere that piece of media is being referenced gets updated with the new import. Uh, so let's show how we can do that. Um, for right now, we're just going to leave the name the same and we're going to hit delete on it and we're going to delete the associated media files, leave the master clip online, that's what lives in the bin. Hit OK. And you can see that now it's offline. So I imported that at DNX HD 36. It's an offline resolution. Let's say that I uh, received a high-res version of that um, at DNX HD 175 from a graphic designer and I needed to replace it and it was at the end of 10, 10 sequences. Well I'll open up one of them, take a look at it, throw it offline by deleting the media, and then I'll go up to my bin and I will batch import it. You can map it to your keyboard or you can right click and choose batch import. Uh, since I deleted it, it's offline only. When it pulls up, you'll see that I have the logo original six second no alpha no audio dot mov. That's the name that's in the bin. And this is the name of the file that it's looking for and the original file path. Uh, if you see the entire file path here, you're good to go. It sees the file. Um, if you see a question mark, and we'll address this later, it means that something has changed. Uh, so in this case, if I was going to up res it, all I would have to do would be change my DNxHD 175 or 175x, depending on what the graphic designer gives me, and I would hit import, and it would up res. I actually made this file at an offline resolution, so changing the resolution here is not actually going to change the quality of the file, so we'll just do a quick import to get it back online. Okay, so it's back online. Uh, let's say that you get a revision to the logo and they have changed the logo so that they've removed the phone number, the web address, and the background colors and you need to get it updated everywhere. Well that can be a major pain if you just import it and have to go and cut it back in. Well here's the beauty of batch import. Let's throw this file offline by deleting the associated media. There we go. Now when we batch import, we're going to select the clip that we're batch importing and we're going to set the file location. Now it's originally pointing back to the logo original. Well, I've received revision one of the six second no alpha no audio. So I'm going to point to the new one and hit OK and then hit import and it will import but it will now import and create media for this new file. So everywhere that it's used in my sequence is going to be updated with my new import. Super, super powerful. One caveat here. 
I label these as six seconds because they are both six second pieces of media. If it is one frame longer, one frame shorter, 10 frames longer, 10 seconds longer, if it's any different duration than what you originally imported, then you will not get a successful batch import. It will not be possible. Avid requires you to import media of the exact same length. I'll show you. I will do a batch import here, and I will point to a four second clip that I made. This one is only four seconds long. When I do import, it's going to look like it's importing. And I think, great, success. I'll just simply have to trim two seconds of nothingness at the end. But you'll see that it hangs for a second as it tries to do this. And what I ultimately will receive whenever it's finished is it imported zero out of one clip. See console. If you go to the console, it's technical stuff. Um, we're not going to cover that right now. But what you need to know is it's offline because the duration is different. This is very, very important. If you end up with a piece of music and you import it and the, your sound mixer gives you something back and it's a couple of frames shorter, you will not be able to batch import that and have it automatically update throughout your sequences. You'll have to import it and cut it back in. If you have to, have him just add a couple of frames to match the, you know, of, of silence at the end just so it matches the exact same duration and then batch import it and watch everything and make sure you don't need to adjust any of your edits but it has to be the exact same duration. Okay, the second thing. Uh, people have asked, can I rename the clips in my bin? Well, I have logo original six second. Let's go ahead and bring that back online. And you'll see that the name here is logo original six second is actually referencing the revision one that we did. So let's just bring the revision back online. And let's go into my bin here and let's call it uh, new logo blue background. Okay, now if we were to need to batch import this, oh, I accidentally uh, brought that in at the wrong resolution. I'm going to batch import. I'm going to change my resolution. Oh, great. I changed the name of the clip. I'm in trouble. How am I going to know which file out of maybe hundreds of revisions we've done this actually links to? Well, that's what the import file location box is for. Um, it tells you the file path that it's looking for as well as the name of the clip that it wants to link to. Um, you can see it's revision one, six seconds, no alpha, no audio. Uh, if for some reason the path here had changed, you could hit set file location um, and you would go and find it. So unfortunately here where it says locate file, it gives you the uh, actual clip name that you've named in your bin and not the name of the original file or the file that it's looking for. So you'll need to move this out of the way so that you can reference that here. So you can, you can rename these all that you want. When you go to batch import, it will tell you what it's looking for. Oh, I did change the resolution here, so we just up that for no reason at all. Okay, um, one thing to look at, um, let's bring in a new one. Let's bring in one with audio. I actually made one of these with a swoosh attached to it, which would be kind of nice. This is the old one. They've decided, you know what, we're going to go back to the old version, uh, but we're going to add a swoosh to it, and your graphic designer was nice enough to do that for you. So let's cut that in. There we go. And now you can see that we have, down the bottom, the swoosh. Uh, this is something else to note. This is actually kind of nice. What you can do is you can delete the associated media, but we only want to delete the video. We don't want to delete the audio. So we're going to keep the audio, throw the video offline, because the video is being updated, audio stays the same. So you hit OK, and you'll see that that went offline. Now, when we go to batch import, let's point ourselves to our new revised logo where they've changed the colors of the background and everything and actually I'm going to stop that and I'm going to set the resolution back so we get a fast import and we don't have to sit here and wait for so long there we go so now you can see it kept the original audio but it replaced the video uh, if you needed to get rid of the audio entirely because you're going to send it out for sound design and he says I don't want your stupid swooshes um, then you could, if you wanted to, just strip it out of your sequence the old-fashioned way by removing it, or you could just go up here, delete the audio only, hit OK, and it'll get rid of it. Okay, another thing that we need to talk about is alpha channels. I made one here with an alpha channel because we thought maybe we want to bring it in over the top of the video and have the background kind of fade on. So we had the graphic designer make one with an alpha. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And here we have one with an alpha. So when we cut that into our sequence, you will see that it flies in over the top of 
the video and the background fades on over it which is really nice of the graphic designer to do it looks nice well once you bring something in with an alpha channel you'll see that it actually creates a matte key effect and a matte key effect is essentially the fill which is the video and then on top of that you've got the matte uh, let's actually step into this instead of expanding it on the timeline it's a little bit easier to see so here you've got the fill and that's the logo and over the top of it is a black and white representation of the alpha so you can see that's what's being used to to cut this thing out over the top of the video well if for some reason we brought this in with an alpha and we didn't mean to but it's already been edited into the sequence we thought alright well now we gotta change the background so we'll just go on ahead and replace this let's delete it out we'll keep the effect clip but we will get rid of the media and then we will do a batch import and we'll point to the new revised clip because they changed the background colors and stuff uh, and they don't want to use the alpha anymore well this is a bit of a nuisance if you import this you'll see that what you actually end up with still looks like it's offline even though it ran through the import and did not give you any kind of an error well the reason it did that is because let's step into this clip you will see that the alpha channel is offline the matte it creates a matte key effect which is black and white uh, with the fill the fill is good to go it's been updated but since there was no alpha information it had no information to re-import to replace the alpha matte so your option is do a regular import and cut it back in everywhere or import it and then find all of your sequences and remove the effect and when you remove the effect it leaves just the fill it removes the matte and the matte key effect so now you're updated and you're good to go um, unfortunately it's not very intelligent as far as the alphas go so you can't just you know tell it to ignore the alpha or import it and tell it that there is no alpha and have it automatically ignore all of that uh, you're gonna have to go in and do a little bit of work yourself so that's the beauty of importing and batch importing um, we'll do one last thing let's go on ahead and import a whole lot of things and we'll see what happens whenever we change let's just go ahead and bring them all in we'll see what happens whenever we change the file path of where all of these things are saved so let's say that you have everything saved on a drive and you end up having everything taken to another drive and you have a couple of folders that are renamed and the system is probably going to lose track of those so we're actually going to take these and let's switch over to this view real quick and we will pull these things out into this folder and then we will rename it Let's rename that uh, movies there we go so we're going to throw all of these offline we want to keep the effect we want to get rid of the associated media keep the master clips okay so now everything is offline um, you can see as we click through here absolutely nothing is good to go so we're going to select them all and do a batch import now if I'd left two of them online I could do offline only it would ignore those that's kind of what that's used for and then just import the ones that are offline but in this case everything is so we'll just choose offline you can see now I have a question mark because it has no idea where these files are it tells me where it's looking it's looking for on uh, volume 14 tutorials avid batch importing AE renders and then the file name but unfortunately we've changed that it's been moved to a different drive or the folders have been renamed so to bring them all back online we're gonna select everything and we're going to set the file location and at this point we're going to start navigating to where the files are and you'll see the very first one it's looking for is logo original four second no alpha no audio now that's the clip name up here in the bin if I had renamed that I need to be looking here to see what the name of the file is so I find that let's see logo original four second no alpha no audio and I hit open it's gonna automatically check that file path for all the rest of the missing pieces and if it finds them it's gonna relink those so now I can hit import and it's gonna go through and bring everything else back online uh, let's see what happens when we make it really complicated and we take a couple of these and we move them out of here so that now they're all living in different locations so let's get rid of these and let's do an offline only now you can see that we are looking for a handful two of these we left online so they're still good to go and let's actually change those two and make this really complicated We'll change the name of this back to renders and we'll bury it in the avid folder there we go so now we're going to select all of those choose offline only and it can't find any of them so let's pick this first one 
four second, no alpha, no audio. Let's go to the tutorials folder and we're looking for that one. There we go. So it finds it. Now you'll notice that it doesn't even relink the next one that's in there because I didn't select everything. So you have to remember to do a command A or control A, select them all. We'll set the file location. It wants the four second, no alpha, no audio. We find it. Okay, so it automatically finds the next one because it's in the same folder. Now these are not in the same folder, so if you end up scattering things all over your drives, you're going to have a bad time. You're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to try and keep everything that you can in the same folder or at least the same general folder structure as you did the first time or you're going to spend a lot of time trying to bring everything back online. So that's something else to be aware of. It's kind of smart when it comes to relinking, but not super smart. Uh, it's once it gets the media in that Avid is at its absolute best. All of this soft linking to different locations on your hard drives is not recommended. So that is batch importing in a nutshell. Remember, files have to be the exact same length to have a successful batch import. Uh, you can point to new file locations. You can rename clips in the bin just fine, and you'll still be able to find them whenever it comes time to batch import. If you change the file location, put it on a different drive, rename a folder, it will tell you it's offline. Uh, and as you are able to then go in and find it, relink. And if you select them all and you have them all in the same folder, it will find them very quickly for you. So you don't have to do a reconnection dance where you, approach, where you have to relink them one at a time. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, drop me an email at mhancockeditor at gmail.com. Thanks.